what kind of tool is that? Uh, it's physics and it's Nobel prize winning physics from the 1930s. It's called Raman spectroscopy. Anyone who's in research, uh, in chemistry or biochemical industries, they're going to have a really fundamental understanding of this technology. If you've ever been to the hospital and put a little red light on your finger that measures oxygen in real time, that is the exact same Nobel prize winning physics from 1930 old tech and back when the Nobel prize meant something instead of all the paywall stuff now, but it's used to measure down to the molecule in labs. This is how we have precise research. It's not widely available to the public and that's the issue. So the NIH actually developed this laser, um, this Raman spectroscopy device, but they were not uh, doing anything with it. And at first it was for macular degeneration and then studies for cancer and then all metabolic issues because it stems from nutrient deficiency. And that's the problem is everyone's just kind of guessing. We don't have accurate measurement yet, but this has been around for 25 years. We've tested 26 million people and 95% are starving at the cell level. That is metabolic disease by definition. We just name it something different wherever it shows up in the body. Now, when you're talking about the validation of a supplement, it's a very important thing that there's so much misinformation, so much marketing and influencing and agitation marketing, fear marketing. When show me the studies on your product, is your product clinically validated? Is it listed in the physician's desk reference? There's only a handful of products that are actually there. It's a $65 billion industry that is blowing up 25% growth every single year. If all these supplements really worked, then we wouldn't be the sickest country in the world. People are just wanting your money and they're quoting science, not performing the science. So our company was founded by ex big pharma researching scientists. Like one of them was the deputy director of Merck, which is the second largest drug manufacturer in the world. These three scientists 40 years ago left big pharma because they created drugs like statins, like Rapimune immunosuppressant therapies for organ transplant and rheumatoid arthritis and birth control. That's Michael Chang, Joe Chang and Carl Degrassi. Top world genius researchers, PhD biochemist. Now those drugs, we don't like them, right? Statins, they do more harm than good. And that's why he left because he saw what Big Pharma did with his invention that came from fermented red yeast. And he said, F this, I'm out. I want to deliver fermented red yeast to the public. When he did, he marketed it that. We can fix your cardiac vessels without all the side effects. Then the federal government sued him. He actually won because he was a scientist that created them. But then Big Pharma lobbied and he lost on an appeal. Instead, of, instead, he doubled down and said, I'm going to gather my homies, these other scientists who are always talking about the nutritional research that we're doing in Big Pharma, but Big Pharma can't patent a supplement, can't patent a natural thing. That's why everything's designed to have um, side effects and, and a patent. It's just a, a whole money thing. And the supplement industry is no different. So when you can actually show me human clinical studies on your product and it's physician desk reference listed, you have all the validation. There's only a handful of companies that can even claim that and only one company that has 70 full-time scientists they're not owned by pharma they're not they don't answer to shareholders they answer to their scientist first so that's a big difference and i'm glad you said methylation because that's a huge huge topic and it's really clever tricky marketing mtfhr is everywhere oh my god i can't take methylated b12 i have mtfhr there's so much science here that it's hard for the average person to understand. So we all fall victim to whoever's speaking the most passionately about something. It's a lack of authenticity in our world. So when it comes to methylation, I myself have methylation issues. I have some MTFHR mutations, which I want your listeners to understand. You can't just say you have MTFHR or you don't have it. It's about clarify how... what say it one more time. M MTFHR. Yes. It's okay. a methylation. It's a, a one of the few dozen genetic pathways that we understand. Okay. So we don't understand a lot about genetics and we do. I mean, we, our company owns a genetic company and screens for nutritional compounds that upregulate and downregulate genes. And we verify it through gene heat mapping. It's one of the most precise things we can actually see, but genes being turned on or off by nutrition, by the way. So MTFHR is, one pathway we understand, but we do not understand how that pathway interacts with other pathways like histamine or sulfur or nitrous oxide. 
And on that pathway, any of those pathways, there's multiple genes in that MTFHR methylation pathway. You can have multiple mutations on each gene. You can have multiple mutations on different areas. So it's how many mutations you have and where they're at. We have to use AI and machine learning to help even geneticists understand that. So now you have a whole supplement industry that's marketing this push for, oh, everyone needs methylated. But here's the problem with methylated. Not all methylation is the same. When you're talking about folic acid, very important. But B12, not at all. It's marketed as methylated um, B12. And they said, this is the kind that your body uses. That's clever marketing. Your, the body does use methylated B12, but even when you take a methylated B12 vitamin, your body still has to cleave off that synthetic methyl group and attach its own methyl group. Which is So technically what? cyanide, right? Is, is when they make like a synthetic B12. Similar. There's Okay. cyanide in apples. You Okay. have more cyanide. When you eat an apple, you're getting more cyanide than you are with synth synthetic B12. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So clever marketing. Yeah. There's And, the marketing right there, right? and methyl means it goes right into the cell. But here's the thing about methylated B12. Not a single form of methylated B12 is shelf, shelf stable up to pharmaceutical grades. That's why there's not a single physician desk reference or clinically validated B12 that's shelf stable. Remember, it's a fraudulent market. You can make all the claims you want. But when you have your own lab and you test everyone else's products, none of them meet their label claims. Zero. And you're talking, you're talking the marketing, not like the big pharma product The, or for, both for, for supplements. for supplements. Gotcha. Gotcha. So certain things you want methylated. B12 isn't really one of them. What people are missing is a methylation cofactor called lithium orotate. It's super cheap. It's not the lithium that's prescribed. It's a different form that's not patented because it's natural and it's completely safe up to 100 milligrams. I've never seen a client or a patient take over 30 milligrams. I take 10 milligrams a day. It helps with your mood, your immune system, and that methylation for the cyano, uh, cyanocobalamin, which I take and I recommend for everyone because it's poisons in the dose. Most people you know, think more is better and they OD it. But they also have the fundamental misunderstanding of all the other cofactors, other nutrients, micronutrients that are involved with helping your body absorb it. Lithium ortate is a huge one that helps you absorb synthetic B12. And we just, so folic acid, different. You want that to be synthetic. I mean, not synthetic. You want that to be methylated because there's a shelf stable form about it. Gotcha. So there's, there's just a lot of misinformation out there about things like this when really it's like, Are we measuring to see if your body's getting enough of what it needs? Are we not fear mongering the, you know, agitation? This form's bad by ours. It doesn't have that form. Well, that's all everyone's falling for instead of diving into the science. And I'm not the genius. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants of many, many other researchers and their combined efforts to deliver clinical grade nutrition to fix cell dysfunction. How does a person go about obtaining lithium? Is it ortate or? Yeah, yeah, Ortate. There's plenty of people who who make it. Uh, my favorite is MitoLife. It's my m i t o l i f e dot c o. It's incredibly cheap. I mean, like a quarter of the year supply is going to be like twenty twenty five bucks. Mm -hmm. Wow. And completely safe to take. You know, I have some clients that take thirty milligrams uh, that have severe MTFHR mutations, and it drastically improves their mood and their their life. Um, but that way they can still take low therapeutic effective doses of cyanocobalamin, not the methylated. They're not wasting their money on this methyl form that's not even giving them a fraction of what's on the label for that product.